Hey guys, testing for blown MOSFETs. For this troubleshooting, uh, you will need controller, multimeter, and especially a multimeter that is capable of measuring either um, resistance or uh, as a continuity mode. But most digital multimeter, they at least have a continuity mode. What we are looking for is a short between a MOSFET and a positive, the, the positive wire or the ground. So we start by connecting one of the probe to the ground wire of the controller and you take the positive uh, probe and well, I'm starting with the green one. Let's see the reading. I'm getting overload in continuity. I'm not getting a beep. And if I switch to resistance, I'm getting 13.6, which is a high resistance, which is exactly what we're looking for. Anything over like eight kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm is perfectly fine. Anything lower, well, there's a chance that something is wrong. If I move over to the yellow, I'm getting 21, which is a higher resistance and also very good. It's different from the, the green phase, but it's perfectly acceptable. Same thing for the blue, I'm getting a high resistance. That means the controller uh, MOSFETs are not shorted with the ground. So now I will move over to the positive side and do the same test again. I should be getting a really uh, something really higher. I'm getting 31, 36, sorry, 37 mega ohm, which is almost like infinite resistance. So that means it's not shorted. I'm getting overload, that means also infinite. I'm getting 16, also very, very high. It's possible that your multimeter cannot read up to that level, so it will probably just put you an OL or just a one or something similar. Uh, if you're unsure, switch over to continuity. And if you hear a beep, that means there's a short. In this case, I'm not getting a beep anywhere, only if I short up my probes. So that concludes the testing for the controller. If any of the six combination uh, failed and you get a short, that means you need to replace while well, the controllers, or if you're capable, you can open the controller and change one of the, in this case, uh, this one has, I think, uh, six or maybe nine, uh, nine MOSFETs. Likely when you get one phase that goes down, you need to replace all the MOSFETs in that phase. So uh, there's one other test that you can do. Uh, if let's say you get some, some, something weird, a weird reading and you're not sure, you can do like a double test. You can take the motor and just, in this case, a cyclone. You see it's spinning freely. There's some magnetic uh, resistance and it's perfectly normal. But if I manually, let's take something that, You see, I'm just using a piece of aluminum and I'm shorting out two phase. The motor is not connected. There's no power going to it. It's just, I'm shorting two phases. It's super hard to, tu to turn. As soon as I'm removing that thing, it's, it spins super smoothly. So if your motor spins smooth like this one, and once you connect the controller, not the battery, just like connect the controller, uh, the phase wire to the controller, if it spins exactly the same, it's very likely that the controller MOSFETs are not, uh, do not have a problem. But I would recommend you to always start with the multimeter to be sure that it's not like a short in the motor and it's actually, the, the issue is coming from the controller. Now, if your motor is super hard to turn, 
with or without the controller that means there's probably a short going either in the the cable here or inside the motor uh, it's possible that the phase overheated and the insulation, the varnish over the windings shorted out and uh, probably the motor needs to be replaced. Uh, so hope that helps and uh, thanks for watching.